To learn the good, the bad, and the reality of the off-grid lifestyle, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. As everybody knows, Carolyn and I have decided that we're gonna spend $500 a month to build our tiny house. We don't expect to spend any more than $5,000, which means if we do this correctly, it'll take about 10 months to build our tiny house. And the reason we're doing this is so we don't dip into our savings. We're gonna tr try to take money out of my regular paycheck. Now, the problem is, is right now we're in this economic downturn and self-employed and I've lost several of my contracts during this downturn. So I'm not making enough to actually spend the $500. So we may have to reduce this down to like $200 a month. But regardless, we've made a lot of progress and, only, and I've only spent $36. <laughs> I've built all this for $36. I had to buy screws and four two by sixes. Now, believe it or not, I don't know how well you can tell, but these two by fours, are probably 40 years old. They came off the trailer. We tore apart this trailer and we salvaged a lot of the two by fours. So they were rotten on the end. So you can see that that is rotten there. So I cut the ends off and it made for perfectly good two by fours. What would have cost probably $150 to build is now a $36 bill. Well, here we are in this economic downturn, and I am very, very, very thankful that I don't spend money. Because now I have money that in savings in my emergency fund that I can rely on. I have property that I that is paid for. I have an acre and a half here, completely paid for, paid cash for it. And I'm building a house during an economic downturn, which a lot of people are saying, a lot of economics are saying is going to turn into a depression. So I feel really good about the way that I've done things in life. And I'm debt free and I don't owe anybody any money. Taxes on my property is $23. Now the taxes on my truck is a little bit higher. It's paid for too. It's a 2015, so I mean it's already five years old, but I bought it new, paid for it, paid it off in I think two years. And of course the tax is a little high on it. Personal property tax is about $300 a year. So my only objective in life is be able to have enough to buy food, some gas for the generator. I've had 10 gallons of gas now, and I'm down to about four gallons. I got four gallons left of gas in my gener for my generator. And I also use that to cut grass with the little lawnmower. And that's been what, almost two months now. I've just used what, six gallons of gas. The solar panels are keeping up just fine with our electric needs. So the only time I have to use the generator is to run the well pump and to come up here and run the saw and the drill. Now I could run the drill off the solar panels, but I don't have enough extension cord to run it all the way up here from the, from the camper. 
So I got to run it off the generator. But I tried to be careful. I tried to organize everything I'm doing so I can run the generator one time, just real quick. So like I'll cut all the boards first and then I can shut the generator off, take some measurements, write it all down, and then I can set the boards in place. And then I start the generator back up and then I'll screw all the boards in. That way I'm minimizing the amount of time it runs. I will tell you this last month, Carolyn and I have done really well. We have a budget of $800. Now the budget has been $800 forever. So, and what I mean by budget, a budget is this is how much money I expect to have to spend each month in order to survive and live. And that does not mean that's how much we make. All the leftover money that I have, I put into my emergency fund and my savings account. So let me explain how I, I do this. So I decided to take $300. And the reason I took $300 is that was what the truck payment was when I was paying payments, is I took the $300 from the truck payment and I said, I'm gonna put that in my emergency fund every month. Then I take the, another $800 and I use that to live on. And that pays all our bills, everything we need. And then whatever's left over, I put into a savings account. Now the savings account, you know, I'm just using it in case we run into uh, something we want to buy, something a little extra. And so it's not a huge priority that I have the savings account, but I do have a savings account on top of it. And all this is collecting interest and making money. But now we're wanting to build a house and I want to spend $500 a month or $200, depending on you know, what happens with this economy. But let's just say it was $500 a month. So what I did was, prior to the economic downturn, when I budgeted everything, I said, okay, here's what we can do. I could put $300 into my emergency fund every month, take $800, that's what we're gonna live on, and then take another $500, and we're gonna put it into the house. And then whatever's left over will go into the savings account. That way, the first thing I'm doing is I'm paying myself. $300 every month I pay myself. So this last month, we have built this right here, right? And we went and bought groceries and all the things that we needed to survive, and we only spent $500. Huge cost savings, especially during this economic downturn. Again, I know the critics are gonna say, Rob, you need to spend more money. Well, here's the thing, is I'm considering this as part of the cash that we had available. We bought this, we paid cash for this. If you think about it, the trailer was on the property when we bought the trailer, this came off the property. So I paid myself with this lumber. So we're not gonna spend any more money this month on the house. We're gonna say, okay, that was our $500, even though it was absolutely free. That way I can still put money into savings. Of course, I paid myself my $300. Now, here's the thing is it all pretty much balanced out if you really consider what's going on. We lost money and then we only spent $500, which came out to about the same amount that we had left over at the end of the month as we usually do. So considering that we saved $300 from our budget, the 800 down to 500, and we still got this built. Now, the next thing that we're gonna have to buy is two things. We're gonna buy insulation and plywood. Now, from what I can tell on the research, I haven't actually went to Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or anything, but what I can tell from research is it's, it's about $15 a sheet, we need six sheets, and then we're gonna get uh, insulation. So this is gonna be another $200 expense uh, next month. So we're, we're gonna wait until next month because we're considering this this month. Now, another thing that we're gonna do to save money, instead of buying tongue and groove plywood, on tongue and groove, at the seams, they, they slip in together. And so when you have two pieces of plywood that come together, okay, you have this seam. And in between the studs here can you know squeak and move around a little bit. So what I'm gonna do so I don't have to get tongue and groove is that, like I said, I got all this scrap lumber over here. And everywhere I have a seam, I am going to put one of these pieces of scrap wood in between the two floor joists. And then the, the seam will be right here. The plywood seam would be right here. That would keep me from having to buy tongue and groove. That saves me $15 a sheet on plywood. Then you have to look for other savings also. For example, the other day I went and bought a box of screws and I didn't look at the price. The lady was 
walking me over there and she says, you want one pound or two pound? And I said, what's the price difference? She said, $6 or $23. And I really didn't think about it. I said, oh, just give me the $6. And so this was $6. Well, the thing is, is if you multiply six times five, because you can get a five per pound for $23, you multiply $6 times five, that's $30. So by buying in bulk, for example, buying the big package, I saved $7. And so these are the things that we all have to look out for, I think, coming in the future. If this turns into a depression, we all really need to start thinking about how can we move along without any money. Thanks for watching.